something from akamma devi from karnataka something from narada bhakti sutras something from baul songs something from manikya vasagar from tamil nadu all disciples of ramana maharshi again and again pressed him please talk about the aksharamana mala you wrote he wrote a beautiful song the marital garland of letters aksharamana mala on shiva on prema bhakti on madhura bhava again and again people were pestering him please give meaning for it you explain he said there are something if it is spoken it is degraded that's all the very word will make it dirty either you should just understand and keep quiet about it or uh, just deny the very existence of it but if you start speaking verbally the whole joy will be lost the whole thing will become dirty it will be reduced to words which can be given any meaning so again nagain and again ramana maharshi avoids talking about his great ecstatic love with shiva then one disciple asks him if it is so sacred if it is so secret why did you sing it out why did you share it with us then bhagwan says i did not sing it for public i sang for shiva only few people were around me around me were there when i sang but those few people i felt they are my very extension they are not different just because those few were very my extension only they were around me i sang to arunachala same way when manikya vasagar was asked to give meaning for tiruvasagam he smiled and showed nadaraja just climbed those steps and sat the garbha mandir of chidambaram nadaraja and disappeared into nadaraja i can understand surely you can't reduce it by verbalizing it's too much too sacred even i cannot verbalize exactly what is the great ecstatic prema bhakti maybe i can inspire you all by talking few things about and sharing one or two techniques and definitions that's all so i wanted to make it very clear in satsang today i am not defining prema bhakti i am not talking about prema bhakti i am only giving some techniques for you to achieve prema bhakti so whatever i am talking should be taken in the sense of inspiration or technique because it's too sacred nelatamareya nitananda tande palatamareya rushiyante tilatamareya tailatante maratamareya tejitante bhavatamareya brahmanish brahmanakishta chennama chennamalli garjunan nilavanaru ariyavara ariyavaru tu it's from akamma devi like the treasure hidden in the ground taste in the fruit gold in the rock oil in the seed the absolute is hidden away in the heart no one can know the ways of chennamalli garjuna akamma devi one of the great prema bhakta 
lived like a child in ecstasy. She sings, it is hidden so deeply, you can't sing about it, you can't tell about it. That's the truth. Manikya Vasagar, very beautifully saying, says, Karandabal kannalodu neigalandar bola sirandadiyar sindanayul tenuri nindru. Karandabal kannalodu neigalandar bola Sirandadiyar Sindanayul Tenuri Nindri. Ramakrishna says, if you go to a feast, before the food was served, there will be a lot of talking. When the food is served, the noise will come down. You will hear only the noise of asking, hey, one more vada, one more laddu, a little more rice. Only those few words will be heard. But after a few minutes, even that will not be heard. Ramakrishna says very beautifully, only the sound, chop, chop, chop. <laughs> of food being tasted in the mouth, or the sound of the curd in the leaf, plate, only that will be heard. I can say, these great sacred sentiments, they are neither the noise of gossip, nor the noise of get the laddu, get the jagiri, get the vada, no. It is the noise of chup, chup, chup. Akamma Devi has nothing to tell. But she has something to sing. It is too much. See, if you are too much in stress, you may not want to tell anything to anybody to show that you are weak or stressed. But your face will show, you will do something like that sometime. Oh God. Your face will show it. Same way, Akama Devi doesn't want to tell anything. She can't. It's too much. But, same way she can't keep quiet. It is too much inside. She is just singing. She has nothing to tell but lot to sing. That is why she is singing. Nelatamareya nitanatante Palatamareya ruchiyante, tilatamareya tailatante, maratamareya tejitante, bhavatamareya brahmana kishta, chennamalli garjunanu nilavanaru ariyavarudu. Like the treasure hidden in the ground, taste in the fruit, gold in the rock, oil in the seed, the absolute is hidden away in the heart. No one can know the ways of Channamalli Garjuna. She is not telling anything in this. No meaning. Final conclusion of this whole statement is the ultimate is hidden in your heart. Nothing can be told. Are I tell that in two words. Why do you need a big poem? Because it is too much to be told in two words. You can't do anything. When you are possessed with that experience, anything you do is poetry. Andal. Every day she will wear the garland which is, cre which is made for Krishna, Vishnu. One day the 
father, of course, who brought, up, brought her up. She, we don't know who is the physical father or the biological father. We only know somebody who brought her up. Namalvar, Periyalvar, sorry. Periyalvar. So he caught her. Then all of you may be knowing the story that he made a new garland and took it to Vishnu and Vishnu doesn't want to be here and it fell again and again and he asked, get me the garland owned by her. Then he realizes her glory and somebody asks her, what do you mean by wearing the garland for Krishna? She says very beautifully, no, I am wearing it for his pleasure. I am beautifying my body because he is going to see me. He is going to enjoy me. He is going to experience me. No more independent identity. Even the body is offered to him, Krishna. Krishna Prasada or Nivedya kept for Sri Krishna. That is why Krishna could not feel that is a different body. He said, let me wear the garland, put on her body. Achala Murti and Sachala Murti. The statue was Achala Murti and Andal was Sachala Murti. Because there was nothing inside Andal except Krishna. Dressing up because Krishna will see me. This belongs to him. So Akamma Devi has nothing to tell. But she has to tell something. So that she expresses her extraordinary ecstasy. When you are in bhakti, you don't possess bhakti. Bhakti possesses you. It's not like one more thing. You will have it in your house. Oh, these, 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 these objects. I have bhakti also. No. Bhakti will own you. You can't own bhakti. As long as you own bhakti, it is not bhakti. It's managed bhakti. When bhakti owns you, is real bhakti, prema bhakti. Karandabal kannaladu neikalandar pola Sirandadiyar sindhanayul denuri nindru Piranda piraparukkum yengal veruman He sings just like that. Milk, sugar can juice and ghee, if all three are added, how sweet it will be. Same way you are sweet, constantly in the heart of the devotees. Just by remembrance, joy and ecstasy. Such light being. Such an ecstatic being. Sometime I go on, avoid the subject by smiling. <laughs> now that's what I am doing. Because the subject is too much. How will you explain the word? Sirandadiyar sindhanayul tenuri nindru. The exact translation means in the heart of the devotees, like a honey, you go on oozing out. You can't explain. Either you experience it or just do not know the existence of it. 
It's like having the eye or not having the eye. That's all. Somebody who doesn't have eye who is born blind. You go on singing about the glory of colors. Oh, how the rainbow looks. First there is a violet, then there is a this, then there is a green, then there is a yellow. That fellow will naturally get irritated and start throwing stones at you. Persecution. That is why so much religious persecution. And these kings with so much of wealth, haram of women and palace and everything, they are so deeply depressed and insecure. And these beggar fellows singing in the street, this Jnana Sammandar, Appar and Dhrunavakrasar, Manikya Vasaka, Sundarar, all these guys singing in the street, Namarkum, Gudiyallom, Namanukku, Manjom, Emambom, Midarpadom, looks making fun of king. That is why that guy is that guy gets completely threatened and frightened and puts him in the prison. And in the prison also this guy is not depressed. Sitting there he is singing. Masil venayum malai madhyamum visu dendralum vingila venilum musu vandarai goigayum gondrade isan yendai yenayadi nidale. Katunai putti or Kadalir Pai Chirum, Natunayava the Namachivayami. He's not keeping quiet. Sometime singing about bhakti becomes dangerous. Because it is, actually I tell you, bhaktas are aliens. That is the truth. Bhaktas are aliens. They do not, don't belong to this planet. See, it's some non-mechanical parts of the brain gets awakened. I tell you, once the bhakti gets awakened, you can't even talk to common man. I know thousands of our devotees who can't go to any party and who can't talk to anybody else, any other subject. All the old relatives, friends, everything has disappeared. It's not that you renounce them, they renounce you. <laughs> because there is nothing in common to talk. What will you do? You are talking about the same thing. What about share? What about market? What about your business? How about this sari? Where, is, where did you get this jewelry? But here, you don't know anything of that. The jewel which you wear is the energy bead <laughs> from the Anabidam. The sari which you wear is ashram sari, white sari. And all you know about is Swamiji and what is the next program? What was the last program you attended? Difficult. Not for us, for others. <laughs> understand somebody is thinking he is the king of the whole country an ordinary guy Trinavakarasar, old guy all he holds his whole properties on small Uravarapada in English I don't know the name just a small weapon to clean the tool, not even weapon, tool to clean the grass, the ground that's the only job he will do. He will go to all temple and clean the floor and do some service in the temple, sing about Shiva. But this guy is so charismatic and ecstatic. Wherever he goes, thousands gather. Come on, put him in the prison. But again, nothing can be done. This guy is sitting there in ecstasy and joy. Bhakti is awakening of the non-mechanical parts of your brain.
Till the end, neither I nor somebody can explain to you the meaning of Sirandadiyar Sindhanayul Tenuri Nindru. No. I can give you the translation, but I can't give you the meaning. Translation says, in the heart of the devotees, you ooze out like a honey. What do you understand? You understand the word honey, heart of the devotees, oozing out, and you try to fix all that and create a visualization. There is a heart, and like pus usually oozes out in the wound, from the wound, the honey oozes out from the heart. If really honey oozes out from the heart, what do you need? You need a bypass surgery. <laughs> or open heart surgery. How will you describe? How will you explain? It is only the ecstasy which can sing. For Prema Bhakti, explanation is not possible. Only experience is possible. Maybe. How my eyes expand when I utter these words. How my throat chokes when I sing these words. The joy my body language expresses when I recite these verses. And the courage my being radiates with these great words, these sacred sentiments. Maybe, I hope that can transmit this into you. The experience may be transmitted into you. That is the only reason I do go on singing, talking every morning. Otherwise, there is no other way, there is no other reason why so many words should be used to sing about something which can never be sing, sung, to explain about something which can never be explained. Maybe I'll try to define one or two things. from the Narada Bhakti Sutras. I have read thousands of books in at least three, four languages which I can read and understand. Only one book in my experience does not talk about the subject at all about which the book is supposed to talk. If it is Yoga Sutra, it talks completely about Yoga. If it is Brahma Sutra, it talks completely about Brahma. There is one book does not talk about the subject which is supposed to be talking, which that book is supposed to be talking. That is Narada Bhakti Sutras. The title is Bhakti Sutras, but till the end Narada is not able to touch one inch of Bhakti. He goes on beating around the bush. 